Campbell. There's no secret. There's no shortcut. Everything that is alive is conscious. Be silent. Be still and know God. Until you feel worthy, it ain't going to happen. Rigorous, ruthless, disciplined focus. You have to get to a place where you can work on yourself. If you are looking to live at the tip of the spear when it comes to health optimization, join my private membership group, Fully Optimized Health. Dot com and get the latest and greatest on hormone optimization, peptides, fitness, fat loss, and most importantly, raising your vibration. Again, go over to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up today. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world. I am Jay Campbell, and of course, you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I'm very excited today to be joined in my virtual StreamYard studio with a very amazing dude by the name of Chris Bledsoe. Chris, what is going on? How are you, man? I'm doing good, Jay. I'm glad to be here and um, enjoying this beautiful spring day here in North Carolina. Awesome, man. Well, from North Carolina to Playa del Carmen, Mexico, I send you my love and my light, and I am very grateful to have you. And this is going to be Without question, an epic podcast because you have an epic story. Let me give you guys his bio. Uh, he is a UFO experiencer and a very strong believer in God. Uh, his life, now that his children are grown, is centered around telling his story and understanding why his experiences are increasing. And I would say not just yours, but many other people are experiencing similar things now. Uh, we are The veil, as you know, is thinning. Uh, we are entering a time or have already entered a time now where you either get it or you don't, right? Like the bifurcation is solidly in line. Uh, there are more and more people waking up by the minute, by the hour, but you pretty much have to be kind of aware now that this is a, and has been always, and, and has been ongoing a battle between the forces of light and the forces of dark, Absolutely. you know, good and evil is a third dimensional uh, duality perspective, because if you're outside of the third dimension and you're coming from a place of neutral observation, there's just dark and light. There isn't good and evil. There isn't Republican or Democrat or conservative or liberal or any other, other nonsense that they have was divided and conquered in the third dimension. In, um, but, uh, I want to ask you as I do now, kind of on my podcasts, uh, and again, for the purposes of today's show, it's Thursday, April 6th, 2023 and man, time is moving fast. Um, what, what is your opinion on humanity right now? Like, are you a buyer? Are we long? Are we entering or close to entering hopefully a golden age, a new, you know, a, a new earth, an age of enlightenment, or is it the opposite? Uh, are we headed South is, you know, the V the Orwellian quote unquote nightmare of, you know, the W E F and, you know, all these negative forces that seemingly are conspiring to, uh, you know, change the planet from a, you know, a, I would say a, tyrann a tyrannical perspective of, you know, control, transhumanism, all of this other stuff. Like, where, where are you as far as your view, vision and, and, and viewpoint of where we're going, say, in the next five to 10 years? Well, um, that's a great question. Um, I can tell you from my experiences with the phenomenon, and that's what we call it. Um, I, I interact with it daily. And uh, have been working with the government uh, behind the scenes for a better part of 15 years now to try to figure out uh, what it is. And um, they they know that I'm able to uh, to ask it to come, and it come. I mean, we've taken. I took 39 videos last night of orbs that were flying around me and my daughter wow. and her husband. And over 2,000 in the last uh, 18 or 20 months, close to two years, um, with scientists here, with PhDs here. So uh, I have a lot of experience daily with the paranormal. I have the videos to, to show and the witnesses that come here. And the overarching thing I hear from the phenomenon is and it started in 2012 when on Easter when I had a an amazing visit from a beautiful lady that some call the Lady of Fatima. Uh, the government recognizes it and they even write about it in my book in the, uh, the forward. Um, she told me that we were uh, 
we were heading for a new knowledge, a new awakening, an awareness. There was going to be trouble along the journey, but um, I think I think that the 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 phenomenon is going to wake us all up, and and with the internet and all the the connections nowadays, they know this, and so it's happening. And there's not a lot anybody can do about it, but I think I think we're heading for a new millennium of uh, of a lot better, less scary times like they are right now. Right? It's pretty pretty frightening what's happening in the world with all that stuff and wars and the weather. The weather is horrible uh, all around the world. So I don't know. I just think that. But I believe we're headed for a new time. Positive. I only think positive. I don't like to talk about negative stuff. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I'm going to ask you questions. So, you know, you can politely decline what I ask you, you know, or answer. It's up to you. You know, you have free will and intent, your own intention and attention on the show. In your opinion, based on your personal experience, and this is obviously an important question because, again, you're qualified to answer it, is the government – negative or positive and i know there are factions of good and bad you know everywhere but it, for the most part because look i can make a really good argument right now that the united states is is is, is a corporation that's now bankrupt uh it's being run by central bankers you know there is no quote-unquote you know, uh, home of the brave, land of the free anymore, right? I mean, there's been so much corruption with just our presidential process, the government process, the election process. I mean, so much nonsense has happened in the last four years. And, and, and again, it doesn't matter what side you're on, because I'm not a guy who's a Republican or a Democrat or a conservative or a liberal. I'm an anarchist. I, I believe in starting over that the systems don't serve, you know, normal people anymore. But it, it, in your opinion, where is the government? Well, and I'll, I'll say this, um, and it's in my book. I, I talk about this extensively. I, I don't have television. I haven't in 10 years. Smart. I do, I do have uh, YouTube, and, I, you know, you can see my workshop. I'm always yep. trying to find how to fix something or how to plant a garden or how to do whatever. But as far as TV and politics and all, I don't watch it. Um, but... My experience with the government has been uh, there are probably, I don't know how many millions of people make up the U.S. government. Sure. So uh, I, I, I think there are uh, the people that I have personally been involved with, and there's been a lot from the CIA, the DIA, the DOD, NASA, uh, and, and it says in my book, the the guy that wrote the Ford is uh, is Jim Simivan from. Uh, he, he was a head of clandestine operations for the CIA. He's a big dog. He's a GS nineteen, which is you, you, that's as high as it gets in the government. And um, these kinds. Of, he, he he even wrote that this case has been studied by government more than anybody in the world. So that being said, uh, when this thing happened in 2007 with my uh, my son and I, I was taken for four hours, and a manhunt ensued. And when I came back, it, it turned into a nightmare from the community and from the church and from the people. The people were out to roast me. Uh, I was playing with the devil. They brought holy water to my property. <laughs> Seriously. So what I'm getting at is is the people were awful, but it was NASA that come knocking on my door in 08. And I had had an ongoing relationship with several people there. It was CIA that came in. It was uh, U.S. Navy and Air Force people, National Reconnaissance Office guys. Uh, they, they've all come. They've all seen the struggle we've had. And pretty much all of them tried to help in any way they can. It was a NASA scientist that went next door to my dad's and said, knocked on the door and said, you must believe your son. Because he didn't want to believe me, nor did my mom. Uh, and showed the badges to him and said, your son's telling you the truth. This thing is real. What he saw is real. 
So what I'm getting at, my experience has been positive with uh, the handful of people I help with. There are you know, 20 million government workers. Right. I've only dealt with a few, but they've always been graceful, helping. When the people were against us, they were there to help. My children had the worst experience growing up because of ridicule. Uh, it's all in the book about uh, Discovery Channel coming in and the MUFON, and they did a hit piece on us and tried to debunk it, called me up, basically a liar. And that caused a, a terrible black cloud at school where they went and the kids yeah. picking on them. And, and, uh, but it was, it was a CIA friend that came to my house in 2016 and said, to my children, call all your friends, bring them here tonight. We're going to have a campfire, and I want to have a talk with all your friends that doubted your your family or your father. And so they did things like this. And so that's been my experience uh, with the government. And so, I mean, so you're basically just kind of echoing what other people say, which is, again, there's good with bad. Yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of hard, I think, for most people to really reason now that because, again, depending on what side of the you know, and again, this isn't about politics, but what side of the political equation you fall on, you know, you're going to be biased or you're going to have what is called recency bias, you know, relative to those things. But as in all things, there's always good with bad. Yeah, there's yeah. always light with dark. There's always the opposite of something Absolutely. You know what I mean? So you're going to always have both versions and stuff like that. But it, I mean, it's it, it's clearly, as I said at the very beginning of the show, and as I always say, it's always been in the universe a battle between the forces of light versus the forces of dark. And the forces of light win because when you start going deep down the rabbit hole and you start investigating, again, the forces of light and dark, all darkness is is the absence of light. Right. And as you know, Chris – all we are as physical bodies is light energy beings anyway. The orbs that you see are probably energy beings themselves in their pure form, right? And they're making themselves visible to you. You know, we're not these physical bodies. I mean, I think anybody who has an ounce of spiritual awareness now knows that we're not anything but these physical bodies in this dimension to spiritually evolve right like we take these physical bodies to ambulate around and to do all these things but it's all for the evolution and growth of the spirit or the soul or you know whatever your spiritual inclination is and that's what we're not but i i think you also understand that so many people because of the veil you know in this dimension is so thick and it's so hard to exist here you know there's so much pain and there's so much suffering and there's just so many survival based programmings that we inhabit when we first come into these bodies that it's very difficult for a lot of people to get to that awareness of like hey man like I'm more than this body and so then people just attach to the body and that's all they're conscious of is the body you know and then they're based in survival programming and their fear and they're you know they're, these are the kind that are you know wearing the you know what and getting six shots and because they're they're fear based, and, and and again, you know, I don't I don't blame them. I mean, it's a very difficult environment uh, to to overcome the fear or, or the programming of fear that you know we see. Like you said, you don't have a TV in your house, and that's a genius move because, bro, if you watch TV, all you have is fear, fear porn, fear porn, fear porn, fear porn. The world's ending. The world's ending. The bank yeah. system's collapsing. Yeah. Russia's going to bomb the U.S. I mean, you know, that's that's what they do because you get to a place of awareness where you realize that the dark side, whoever they are, and it doesn't matter what they are, but whoever they are, they feed off of our fear. Yeah. They siphon the human energy field, which is again, all we really are, those orbs, right? Like they are siphoning the human energy field of fear energy. So the more afraid you are, the more they're coming up and sitting on your shoulder and, you know, essentially biting you for lack of a better term. And, all we have to do, each of us is, you know, to get to where we get to a really good place of awareness and we create our own reality is like not have fear. But that's the hardest thing to do because almost everybody has some form of fear. Well, you're exactly right about that. And I've been preaching this for years now. Uh, that's why I don't have television. Everybody wants to know, how do you, how do you, um, how do you do what you do? How do you, and, and this will come out this year. Uh, in television, 
uh, uh, I can't say any more, but it's coming out this year. And uh, the, the, the phenomenon listens to me. Last night, my daughter and her husband were here, and I just asked them to come. But if I had fear, and they did, I took 39 videos. If if I had fear in me, if I watched the television and uh, and I got up every morning and I'm a junkie for the next news and all of a sudden I'm seeing a war or a weapon, well, my whole day is gone. Yeah, It, it, it ruins you. So I stay away from that totally. If I did that, I would never have the connection with this... Um, this phenomenon that I do, I know that for sure. So I, I preach against, uh, you know, stay, stay out of the fear, stay out of the negativity, find your happiness today. Don't worry about next week or next year. Right now. That's all you right can. now. Be happy today. Live for today. Cause you don't, you're not guaranteed tomorrow. You know what I'm saying? So it's a, it's a very hard to stay positive. Mm -hmm. It really is. But I tell you, we can do it by just not um, if you practice hard enough and you don't partake in it or watch it. Yeah. I mean, are you currently suffering from a testosterone deficiency? Are you already using therapeutic testosterone? If you are, go to tottdecoded.com forward slash 10 dash questions and find out the top 10 questions you need to be asking your doctor about therapeutic testosterone. These are critical questions to ask your doctor. If they can't answer them, you need to find another doctor. All you have to do is meditate, sit in silence, pray, affirm, just opt out. I mean, that, Chris, that's the answer. The answer is to opt out of the fear programming, which is the matrix, which is everything that most people pay attention to. The okay. news, their phone, you know, the Facebook feed, the Instagram feed, the TikTok feed. I mean, all of the bullshit that is not necessary in your life for right. anything is what people are attuned into. And if they were actually attuned into creating or consciously co-creating with obviously God source, uh, they would never have any of these problems, you know? So it's like, if you place your consciousness, you know, and I always go back to this Hawkins scale of consciousness, the vibrational frequency, but if you place your consciousness in positive, uh, attitude or focus, or again, consciously co-creating serving others, doesn't matter what you do, right? Like you could be a janitor at a high school. And if you take your job seriously and you're into serving others and you have the cleanest, you know, high school in your district, right? Because you want people to know that you take pride in your job and you want them to be able to walk and, and uh, gather in a, in a clean environment, right? Just as if you're the CEO of your company, you know, you do what is right by your company. It's probably a lot harder for the CEO to do to service to others versus the, the janitor, because like, you know, uh, corporations are by their very, by their very measure cutthroat, you know, the job of a corporation is to outcompete everybody else. So there's no equality, but at the end of the day, man, it's pretty simple to place your consciousness in service. Yeah. But as you know, most people place their consciousness in service to self, yeah. which is the ego, which is, again, social media, watching TV. Bro, you think about the Bible statement, right? Like um, in this world or of this world, in this world is conscious co-creation. That's like, hey, man, I'm just creating all the time and I'm here in the third dimension. And that's OK, though, because I'm always creating. And when I create, I'm serving and helping other people. But consumption, which is of this world, is where the dark side wants people. That's where they want you to place your consciousness. They want you to go on Netflix, watching porn, uh, consuming the internet, listening to the news. I mean, again, never creating anything of substance or production, but consuming and staying focused in the consumption. And that's what they want people at, dude. Well, there's it, it a lot of that, I can tell you. You're exactly right about... Uh the, it's, it's terrible but um, you just stay positive is all I can say stay away from that kind of stuff and focus on yourself and your connection to 
the divine world because there are beings around us. And like you said, in the orbs, I have videos of orbs at uh, this close to me. And one particular one, there's a young lady coming tonight to visit. Um, she got a book and wants it signed, but she's in the book. And it talks about an orb that appeared in front of us. She was suffering with lung cancer and um, it had a very uh, dim outlook. And this was in 2016. And so she called me and asked, could she come and um, bring her girlfriend in? They came on my property and we were out gathered around this tree that spontaneously combusted three times in my yard. It caught on fire three different times in one night wow. and we put it at well, that tree had a lot of stuff around it. Uh, a lot of orbs would float around it. We could see them a lot, uh, see them with your eyes, not something that, um, I mean, they, I've got pictures of them, uh, you know, just there. And um, this orb approaches the camera, which is the lady beside me on my right has the camera and we're standing shoulder to shoulder and we're watching some, some Native Americans that called me and wanted to, to come visit. I said, well, great. Come tonight. I have this young this young lady coming out of town. We'll pray for her because she has cancer. So it was kind of uh, ironic. They showed up. They're doing their Native American chant at this tree. And we're standing at a distance watching. Everybody's listening. Dogs in the dog kennel are howling. My dad had hound dogs. And it's very eerie sound. And you can watch the video at the 31 second mark. This orb appears and it appears in front of me and they're always rotating, spiraling. And here it comes, it approaches me and suddenly it flashes. And when it flashed, uh, out came uh, about a seven foot tall glowing white figure that immediately went back translucent and the orb is now inside this figure and you can see it and it wow. walked out of screen it walks off the camera to the lady beside me who was sick well she's cancer free today and she's coming tonight to celebrate it that's awesome man that was in 2016 so that's uh that's why i just wanted to reaffirm your thought about these orbs they are beings of light um, and maybe other things. There's no telling them what all is out there. Well, so when you say the translucent seven foot being, I mean, instantly it just, that's a shining one. You know, yeah. the ancient texts talk about the shining ones. And these are, I mean, let's just be honest. I mean, these are higher dimensional energy forms, you know, call them beings, call them beings of light, call them shining ones, whatever you want, who are literally like essentially gods, right? Like, I mean, when, when we talk about uh, God, I think, it's easy for people to get lost because they're so brainwashed by, you know, let's just call them Abrahamic religious teachings. When the, the truth is, is that creation force, God, whatever you want to call it, the, whatever created all of us and everything in it is like a, is like a very high level energy. It's not some dude with a white robe and a beard, you know, sitting on a chalice judging people, which obviously so many people think it is. And so, to think of God's source, creation force, as like an energy, that's what you would see. You would see an energetic being of great stature, which clearly is what you saw, um, who has this ability to fix things. Let's just call it fix things, right? You know, like, it, you know, all the great ascended masters, yogic teachers, spiritual gurus, whatever you want to call them, you know, they always said that god or source was evolving because again it learns or the energy learns through us if we are all just part and parcel you know people talk about unity consciousness collective consciousness if we are all part of one and again the law of one talks about this but if we're all one then what we would be would be holographic fractals of the source pieces of that consciousness and so yes like it all of us have this ability to self heal, to be energetically healed by again, you know, higher density beings, which is what that what, what clearly came out of that orb. Um, but people are just confused, bro, because again, the planet has been in a, it, it, what I would call a state of amnesia for so long. True. Uh, and again, maybe that's actually purposeful by God itself, or 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 you know, again, I don't like saying him, but you know, it 
Because isn't the purpose for each of us as holographic fractals of the source to evolve and grow spiritually? And isn't it best to grow spiritually if you come in forgetting what you already know? So it's like, again, a constant evolutionary process. I mean, it really is. It's like an evolutionary biologic process to be a soul and to come into a physical body and to not know anything, to be basically dysfunctional, right? Only thing you know is that you got to survive, right? You come in as a little baby, You know, you've been in this like ectoplasm, you know, the amniotic sac of your mom for nine months. And it's like the, uh, one of my teachers calls it the Buddha sac, you know, and now you come out and you're like, oh my God, you're like, yeah, I gotta breathe. You're in this like crazy traumatic environment. You know, the doctor's slapping you on the ass. Your mom is like hugging you. You're vomiting on yourself. I mean, you got to think about like what it's like to be a baby, you know, coming from perfection into the matrix. Right. Right? So it's like now you're like, you got to evolve. You got to like wake up and you got to grow. And I think, dude, that's the path for every soul. And somehow now you, you know, because I was just reading your book in the background. um, And by the way, you're 332 reviews on Amazon. I'm going to leave you the 333 because I'm Jay Campbell 333. (laughs) So hopefully I get that up there today. So again, there's no coincidences, all these synchronicities. I was just looking at that and I was like, come on. Right. I got to be that 333. But no, but the truth is, is that um, we are all here to evolve and grow our soul. And somehow like your purpose now is to have these to to, to, to attract, I would just call it attract these energy beings, uh, you know, these, you know, higher density godlike forces to help other people, bro, because that's what you're doing. I mean, like through your work and through your teachings and through your book and through your podcast and through your, everything that you're doing, your experiences, you're, you're opening people up to a higher realm yeah. and that higher realm is helping them through healing. I mean, through energy, through information, through just awareness. I mean, really it's just awareness. All we are is consciousness itself. We're not these physical bodies. Right. It's a simulation. Yes. Yes. The real, the real world. Um, and this was, something I started talking about in 2012 after this uh, incident with this beautiful lady. Uh, she explained to me that it's much like the, um, th- that the real world is the eternal world. Right. There's no time. The exactly. only time that we experience is our own life where we come into this existence and the time clock starts the day you're born and will end for everyone. And, um, so it's like where we came from, there's people there watching us, like watching us evolve or watching our lives. Like our, your grandma could be your spirit guide right That's beside right. you and you're not That's even right. know it. They're you're there good. rooting and tooting for us to get through, right? We're, yep. It's like a video game. We create them. <laughs> totally, bro. We create them all the time. And so God can easily do that. And and I agree about these beings being a part of God. It's just uh, that's part of the, the teaching when you learn about angels. Because that's what the ancient people called them 2,000 years ago. A lot of the religions called them angels. Um, and I, I kind of think they're basically the same thing. What does that mean? We don't know for sure. But they are... Um, if you study that, it tells you that it's a, a, they're a, just another part of God, a manifestation of God. Um, and, and you can read this in certain scriptures in the biblical text about God coming in the form of a human or they come in the form of animals and birds. Look at the Egyptians. They believed in their deities were forces of nature. So... Um, I think the creator can come in many forms and nature is often the way it could be next to you watching you and you don't even know it. That's right. That's exactly right. And that's why like what you were just saying, like, you know, you have to be committed to maintaining positivity Yeah. because the more positive that you are, the more you stay focused in the realm of, let's just call it the, uh, the benevolent, the light, let's just call it the realm of light. Right the more you're going to attract the same thing. I mean, again, quantum physics very clearly states, and Chris, it's mind blowing how many people are still ignorant of this, but quantum physics very, very clearly states that that which is focused upon tends to manifest. 
Yeah. So if you are focused on the light, you are focused on goodness, on service, on creativity, on things that, again, give back to the universe, that's all you get. Yeah. But so many people focus on lack or on what they don't have. And, and then they create more of the same. And when you talk to them and you ask them about this kind of stuff, they always don't get that what you don't have is the opposite of what you should focus on. And they always, again, attract more of the negativity, more of the victimhood, you know, again, call it low vibration behavior into their life because that's what they are thinking about all the time. It's like, you know, if you're broke, how are you going to get more into your life? Again, more being better energy, right? Because that's all currency and material things are is energy. Well, it's not by thinking about how you're broke all the time. It's about creating right. something that creates a strategy about having more. Whatever it is, it doesn't matter. It can be anything. But again, so many people don't understand that it's about thinking about what you want and not what you don't have. 100% correct. And I don't know if you know this. You're familiar with the word abracadabra. And, and not many people know what that means. And it's an old Hebrew word. Right. Uh, and what it basically says is I manifest what I speak. Mm -hmm. That's what that term means. And, and most never know it. So you can manifest darkness in your life if you live that way. Or you can change your way of thinking and, and bring the light into your world. And they guide you too. They'll guide you to, to um, manifest miracles in front of you. I've experienced that myself. And it's, it's so important to be positive. I'll say this to add to that. One thing that's really an anomaly. Uh, of course, John Alexander wrote this in the... Uh, introduction in my book, Colonel Alexander, U.S. Army Colonel from Harvard University, run Los Alamos National Laboratories there for a while, head of non-lethal weapons division. The guy's a, a, he's a great friend and brilliant. Um, but for some reason, and he said this, you know, you, you get involved with me or read my book, it, you may start having experiences. Well, I've had an overwhelming lot of people write me probably a thousand people in the last 30 days um, have written me or more. And a good bunch of them are starting to say, man, I finished your book. I couldn't put it down. I cried. It, it helped me spiritually. And tonight I saw an orb. So yep. I've got a whole lot of people telling me because they read this book and it opened them up to a new reality that they're now experiencing this phenomenon, which they never had before. And that's quite amazing uh, that that's happening. And John kind of suspected it. And it sure enough is going on. It's, uh, it's really incredible. Um, let me just ask you, and again, I know you've been asked this by many times, and I've been reading through your reviews as I've been talking to you. Your, your book is pretty amazing. I literally just ordered it myself. That was that, that sound that went, dong! <laughs> it was my Amazon. I have to actually send it to a different address in the States. You can't order books. It's so crazy, dude. You can't order books uh, off of Amazon that aren't Spanish to Mexico. It's so weird. Like there's a lot of things you can get, and but you can't order books, right? So like I have like a, I have an East Coast Depot and a West Coast Depot for all my books. I'm a prodigious reader. I read voraciously. So I just ordered your book. And it will be there by Saturday, which is amazing because I'm going to be in uh, Tampa tomorrow to go see my daughters for Easter weekend. Well, um, but I'll be able to have your book and I'll obviously comment with you. And I'm, I'm going to leave you a review today anyway because I know it up and say, hey, I just did a podcast with the guy. But I can't say that because I'm a, 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 a author on Amazon. So, you know, they they will block my review. I, I have to I, I can't do that that way. But anyway, I'll get it up there. But um, do you ever have conversations with the orbs, you know, I mean, obviously from an energetic standpoint, I mean, or, I mean, is there a way, like, can you affirm or pray or meditate and then communicate or connect with them? Like, how does that work? If it does? Uh, absolutely. I do. That's why they come is they, uh, and then again, it's in the book and, and one of the chapters and Dr. John Alexander wrote about this in his book, reality denied. 
where he came to my house in 2015 and I took him down to where it all started. And as we were standing there out under the stars that night, I looked at John. I said, John, they're here right now. And I pointed up above us and immediately it appeared a, a big ball of light just appeared in a flash, flashed four or five times and flew away. And he looked at me and he said, how did you know that? I said, well, I hear them, John. They talk to me. So they, they put, they talk to me in a couple of ways. Um, one straight out, I feel them, I feel them energetically and I start seeing images in my, I can be watching you or talking to you and squarely talking to you. And suddenly it's like my eyes are glazed over and I'm seeing images of something. And it's basically, I think they're sending telepathic images to me and it alerts me when that happens, this energy feeling arises. And I just have learned to say they're here right now. And that's how I told him that, but I see images in the form of telepathic communication. And then when they flash you, often they'll appear five feet away in a flash, just this orb just flashes you and it disappears. It appears and disappears in a flash. And that bright white light um, will make you have dreams. It's like it puts wireless information right into your brain. So they communicate with you in a number of ways, telepathically and um, you know, however they can wirelessly, I think all of our bodies are wireless communication with yeah, sort sure. anyhow. So do they, do they ever tell you, and again, not that it really matters, but do you, do you ever get like a, uh, a download, so to speak of like where they come from in the universe? Like, is there a specific geographical location? I know it doesn't matter, but I mean, you know, people always want to like third dimensional thinking. They want to like locate them. They want to look at them on a star map. <laughs> Well, uh, I honestly believe that they live in the air around us. Yeah. And they're everywhere. The universe is big and yeah, yeah. They can uh they they can travel across this universe in three or four hours to the center of it. Right. That quickly. Right. Yeah. And um but I think they live full time around us and we just can't see them. Yeah, so you energetically can connect with them if you're allowing your you know, highest self or higher self or your spiritual center uh, to connect with them because they're just instant available. But you have to be at the right frequency, correct? Well, let me tell you this. For example, last night, my daughter sitting there with me and it started getting on time. We got hungry. So our minds were starting to think food and we kind of drifted away from what we were enjoying, the presence of this phenomenon. Yeah. And finally, right before we went to go in, this orb flies over and it's way up there. I mean, it's way up there and it's, 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 it's bright, but it's up in the clouds and above the clouds really. And Emily looked at me and she, she said, uh, cause of the 39 videos, all of them were ground level except for three or four. They were all around us except for, but finally she said, daddy, you wonder why they're so far away now? And immediately, the minute she said it, 20 feet from us, this orb flashed us right in the face. Like so no, we're not, dude. We're right by you. Yeah, that's what, exactly what it told her. And I was glad it did that because it just helped her understand and have faith that uh, if you don't have the faith, you're not going to get there. You got to know and train your brain that way. It reminds me of the, you know, Master Yeshua, a.k.a. Jesus, his statement, uh, seek and ye shall find. Yep. Knock they're always be open. Right, there. right. They're always available to you yep. through energy of your consciousness. Again, yep. all we are is consciousness, Chris. So when you're conscious of their awareness or your consciousness, you're conscious of them being available to you, all you have to do is change your frequency. Yeah. And as you know, they're never aware, you're never aware of them, and they're never making themselves available to you if you're living in fear. If you're in a negative frequency, if you're like most people and you're in victimhood, yeah. you don't take ownership for who you are. I mean, I have my daughter, my youngest daughter's 13 and my 15 and 13 are, you know, totally different beings raised the same way, but she is in victimhood. It's not her fault. 
you know, she watches TikTok and, you know, all these young kids are constantly brainwashed and told that it's not their fault. They deserve this and that. And yeah. it's like, I always tell her, and I know it's not the right way to communicate with her, but I'm teaching her to become self-accountable and personally responsible. And I say, Gabby, her name's Gabriella, but I call her Gabby. I'm like, Gabby, it's your fault. And she gets so mad. But I always say that to her, it's your fault. Because I literally want her to become conscious yeah. that everything that happens to her is up to her. She is her reality creator. She creates the life that she wants. And until people, Chris, and you know this, but I'm just speaking to the choir right now, but until people take ownership of every single experience in their life, they're never going to connect with the orbs or to creation force or to God or to that frequency of divinity, whatever you want to call it, your higher right. self, because they're not capable of, of living in the reality that like, Hey man, I, the buck stops with me. Exactly. It, it's all our own doing. It's, you know, you can, <laughs> you can choose to be on the couch and be totally miserable and in, in uh, depression and blame the world. Or you can choose to get up and go out and have fun and enjoy life. It, it, it's exactly really, right. it's all in right here. You know, it's all right there. And that's a, it's a battlefield, a battlefield of the mind. And it's, there are just benevolent beings around us that don't want us suffering. They don't want us, because that's the, let me say this, the common thread I found in 16 years of this I get calls and letters and emails by the dozens in, in, in 16 years, a lot, you know, thousands. And it'll be people that reach out to me because of ridicule. It's a little lady that's 85 or um, young people. I had an experience. I got to tell somebody. I'm afraid to tell it. I don't know what to say. But it really messed me up and blah, 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 and not to be ugly. I'm just paraphrasing. But I ask them all the same thing. I love to hear your story. I want you to tell me. Because I've been public with it, it inspires people to talk, right? And so when mm -hmm. they, before they ever tell me anything, um, I always say, let me ask you this. Before you tell me your story, I ask one thing. What was life like? when the paranormal started happening to you? What was it like when that uh, light in the sky or light in your room or whatever came into your life? And it's always the same. If there's 1% that isn't, I'll give it 1% maybe, but 99% of the people will say, I lost my dad, I lost my mom, I lost a child, my husband left me, my wife left me. I lost my job. I lost my home. It's always the same. Right. They're at the bottom of their barrel and suffering. And that, um, through that suffering, brings the paranormal into right. people's lives. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a common thing. And, and I would I, say and the would... main thing. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just said, and I would say it's the main reason this paranormal stuff is happening to most people. Trauma. Yeah. Are you using therapeutic peptides? Are you a new user? Maybe an advanced user? Maybe you're considering starting peptides? Highly recommend going to the link right below, thepeptidescourse.com forward slash 10 dash mistakes and download my PDF and learn what not to do before starting therapeutic peptides. Yeah, I, I was just literally going to say that, like, even people like myself and, you know, people who are pretty much, I, I, I call people like me hyper aware. We, we all had to have a dark night of the soul, Chris, and sometimes there's many dark nights of the soul. And for me, it was attempting suicide. You know, it was being thrown in jail and losing my family and losing all my material things and all this other stuff. Uh, you know, being accused of things that I didn't, I wasn't guilty of. But again, I was because, again, I at that time of my life was like, you know, blaming other people. But once I could see things for the way they really were, which was, again, I'm personally accountable. I'm personally responsible. Even if I'm not, I still am. I'm taking ownership. That's when everything shifted. And that's when I started seeing things for the way it was. And that's when I started to be able to access the divine and become the person that I am now and have podcasts with people like you, you know, and it's right. like, 
there's you and I are not different from anybody else. Right. Any single one of us can access those orbs. Any one of us can have conversations with ascended masters, with angels, with Yeshua, with God himself, you know, Mother Mary, whatever you want to, whatever divine being. But you have to access that frequency. And the only way you're going to access that frequency is by serving other people, by being conscious, by not engaging in low vibration activities. Again, not being in service to self, right. helping people. You know what I mean? Not trying to fuck people over and take advantage of people like in your job or your business or whatever, you know, where so many people get so caught up in like ripping people off or like, you know, taking advantage of another person. Like all of that would never give you access to the frequency of these beings. Right. Never. I tell you, too, they're big on not uh, interfering with our free will. Oh, yeah. And by that being said is... um there, I first started asking a friend at NASA um, years back why it is when I meet certain people, these people tend to start seeing the phenomenon. Why is that? And this is one of the highest ranking guys at NASA I was asking that to. And he said, well, we believe, uh, his group of scientists, people, believe that that we all have a truth switch of some sort within us. And once you really realize it's real and you know it a hundred percent and you accept it, then, uh, and you seek, like it says in the Bible, seek and you'll find But yep. you got to it. You got to acknowledge it exists. You got to accept that it's there and, uh, really know it and, uh, be good with your, uh, interaction and free will part then you'll get to start seeing them a good chance of it. Not everybody, but a lot of people do. But I mean, yeah. First. Yeah. Well, I mean, like just, I don't need to cut you off. I'll let you keep going, but they can't appear to someone who's not conscious of their frequency. There you go. Yeah. You won't even see them. Like they, they're still there, as you said, just like they made themselves available to your daughter. Yeah. But until you're like consciously out of frequency, capable of receiving the vision or actually just being in conscious of their a present awareness, you're, you're just not going to see them. I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, but I mean, again, you know, I think of the words of, you know, Jesus, Yeshua, you know, is talking about my father's house has many mansions. I mean, that's literally the talking, what he's truly describing is the dimensions and that consciousness can only be accessed in various dimensions when your consciousness is very high. You're, you're at a frequency relative to experience those other dimensions. I mean, you can't experience a higher dimension when you're down here vibrating in victimhood. Give me a break. Right. I, I could pretty much go along with that for sure. I think there are many levels that the soul has to experience yes. before it gets to that highest, you know, it gets back to God maybe. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's just incredible. We're at the, we're at the, just cracking the door open to a world that's so complex. Um, it, it, it boggles the mind how complex. Because these beings, they can read your thoughts. Oh yeah. They they know what you're going to think before you think it. They know the direction you're going to look. If I have 20 people in my yard and there's one skeptic, it won't show. That's one hundred percent right, bro. Right? But skeptics, if person, skeptics get skepticism. Yeah, that's what you get. If you're right. a skeptic, you never get the truth. That's right. You'll never see it. It's not going to appear unless you accept it. That it's that's right. real. That it's what I have. All you have to do is accept that it's possible. But when you're skeptical, by your very nature, you deny its possibility. Yeah, you just hurt your own self. That's right. And what it does, let's say this. Let's say we got all of us standing looking to the east. And that skeptic, I've seen it happen over and over. That skeptic turns his back to grab a bottle of water. And immediately the orb appears in front of 24 100%. people. And that one is looking the other way. And I've seen it over and over and over. It's, yeah, 100%. I mean, it's funny you say that because like, I get, you know, just like you do, I get people that reach out to me all the time that want to do shows or podcasts or whatever. And I find out, you know, okay, show me who you are and whatever. And if I ever see the word skeptic in the title instant, no, 
Yeah. Not interested. Yeah. Because you're not interested. Exactly. Right? I, I won't deal with them. I, I've had enough of them. <laughs> Right. Yeah, let them lay in their their own world of skepticism well, and never learn. I'm sorry. Dude, the craziest part is, and again, this is the universe syncing you up with me today. So I've done, you're my third podcast, and all three have been profound. And again, it's just the way the universe works. But we were all talking, and now I'm going to add it to this one. This is how crazy the world is. And I know you know this, but I'm saying this. So right now, the number two selling book in the entire world is The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins, which is obviously an absolute farce, right, that anybody out there doesn't acknowledge that there's this divine creation force. But that's how disconnected people are. Sci yeah. tr you know, trust the science, be a skeptic, all of this nonsense uh, that takes people away from God, from divinity, from source creation, from that frequency of perfect divine love is so strong right now, Chris. Now, granted, there's people like me and you who are preaching the opposite, speaking the opposite, and attracting the truth and the real beings that show that it's real. But think about how disconnected this planet is right now, that that book is the number two book in the world. That's how many people are lost right now after the last three years. They're lost. Totally it is pretty bad, I have to say. Well, there's that. I'm, I feel sorry for them. Yeah. Yeah. He's, I mean, he, what else can you say? Blinded. He's blinded by the truth. The meek shall inherit the earth. Yeah. You know, exactly. it, it takes someone to seek. Again, seek and ye shall find. I mean, it's not hard. But like I saw that the other day and I was just like mind blown. I mean, I sat there with my mouth on the floor for about three minutes as I was reading the reviews and reading all these people. And I'm thinking like, I mean, Chris, we can make a good argument that really it's actually satanic. It's actually the parasitic energy parasiting the mind of Richard Dawkins, who, you know, is a, a credible academic. But I mean, to be so gone, well, to be I'll, so disconnected. You, let me tell you this. And, and this came right out of Washington, D.C. Um, oh, oh, it, it's been a long time ago. But I got a call from from some folks there, and they told me uh, one thing for sure. Ph.D. absolutely means zero when yep. it comes to this phenomenon. Totally. It really hampers them worse uh, to really understand because – uh, they have they're in a disadvantage all they can do is think and speculate but they don't they'll never uh understand it no more than the meek will or in fact the meek will understand it probably better the poor the person that talks to god every day and has that uh, relationship but a phd means nothing I mean, there's a level playing field. Trying to figure out this phenomenon is completely level. There's no books to read. All you can do is just interview and weed through the truth and the and the, the lies and try to figure it out. But but thank God, dude, there's more and more people like you and me and podcasts and more and more people are coming online every day, bro. I mean, the truth is definitely out there, you know, as Fox Mulder used to say in the X-Files, but it's up to the individual, the soul, the yeah. spiritual seeker to find it. Yeah. But it's it's out there. It's available. It's so simple now. I mean, I you know, I think of Amazon and, you know, everybody talks about how Bezos is bad and all, you know, a Amazon is satanic and all this stuff. But at the end of the day, dude, you can still use Amazon for great things because your book is there. My books are there all these amazing spiritual seekers with great stories and information is out there. So, I mean, again, where do you place your consciousness? Do you place your consciousness in the God delusion or do you place your consciousness in people who are experiencing the divine every day, like yourself? Right. It's your choice yeah. as an individual. You're hundred percent right there. It's, it's all a personal choice. And, uh, I think I think we're in for a new world, a new a new awakening that's uh, happening now, and there's no stopping it. And uh, you know, this is like you said, a truly a battle of uh, light and dark going on. Yeah, 
But the light always wins, Chris, because again, you get to a, you eventually get to a level of awareness where you realize that all the dark is, is the absence of light. Like literally a light bulb slash light switch can completely end the fake darkness right. in a flick, in a yeah. flick. I mean, I mean, it's, it's literally that simple. So you have to take your consciousness to a place of like, I'm not fear. I have no fear. God is my center. God will protect me and lead me. I will not be led astray. That's just what God does. That's what creation and energy, creation force energy does. There's nothing to be afraid of. I mean, again, I mean, I know this is like most of my audience understand this, but bro, we're not these physical bodies. I mean, you know that you're, you're around orbs like every day of your life. I mean, you've been experiencing these energy forms. That's what we are. Yeah. That's what we are at base essence. We're not Chris Bledsoe or Jay Campbell in these flesh, you know, meat modems, you know, whatever you want to call this flesh body. Sure. It's cool to have a body. It's cool to experience physical reality through sex, through eating, through exercise, through all these things that we do as physical beings, but it's not the end all be all. No, it's just, a, it's just a temporary place. That's right, man. It's a container. Yeah. It's a temporary it's a place for the soul. And it's totally, you know, we're totally speculating from there on, but I really believe uh, after here, we go back to the eternal world. That's right, bro. Perfection. Where your mom and your grandma and all of them are waiting. Everybody. Yeah. 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 Uh, it's a hundred percent true. Uh, it's interesting. It, it, you know, there, it, we're all at different levels of, of soul evolution and no, and no, no level of awareness is better than another. It's like, I always say, we're all walking the same path back to that and no rate of speed based on like your level of awareness is better than another, you know, uh, cause again, everybody's on the same path, but it is interesting to think like, you know, do fear-based people who don't make it out of the fear have to come back and, you know, experience a, a, another lifetime or many other lifetimes to graduate? I mean, I don't think, you know, the, I don't think the answer is really known. I mean, obviously a lot of the great spiritual gurus and sages talk about, you know, per, uh, eternal life and constantly getting a chance to be better and, you know, to serve more and create more and all that stuff. So it's like, that's the only question I have is like, you know, if you were fear-based when you died, you know, do you have to come back and kind of, you know, do another go round, you know, or, or maybe many, you know, to get to a place where you're not fear based. I mean, obviously, two people like me and you now, because of what we've experienced and who we've met and all these amazing, wonderful things. Now we're not fear based. Right. But, you know, a lot of people are, you know, I think of like my mom who just died and she was totally wrapped up in fear, bro. She was like, you know, probably thought she was going to go to hell. She wasn't a good mom. She wasn't a good wife. I mean, you know, blah, 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 blah. I mean, who knows the bullshit that she believed, but so many people are like that, you know, they, they really don't connect with their higher self or God or source or the angels or anything like that because they're so fear-based, bro. Like they, they really don't feel that they deserve to have that. And you and I both know that everybody can have that. It's just a desire to have it. It's a desire to connect with it. But so many people are so caught up in fear. So that's my only question is like, do they have to come back? You know, do they have to reboot, so to speak, and kind of get out of that fear-based state to finally access the many mansions? I mean, I don't know. I, maybe they don't. Maybe they still get a chance to go back into eternal life, even in fear. I don't know. I, I definitely have questions about that, though. But that's kind of like, I think, for me, the, the last you know, remaining question is like, what happens to the fear-based people when they, when they exit? Well, I kind of agree with you uh, based on uh, study and reincarnation. Uh, there are many, many stories of someone who was 19 years old and right. uh, got sh shot on the battlefield. And, you know, a hundred years later, he comes back. Maybe. And they have a scar, right. Or a birthmark, right. Where they got shot. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I got I got shot at ten years old, point blank in the back. Wow! Had, had a blew a hole in me that big, right in my left shoulder, and I got lead all around my chest and heart. Some of you can see on this side, and uh, I was saved by some force. Yeah, and I remember being up above the earth, looking down from like uh, inside a clear vessel, like a bubble, which was an orb, I guess. And, For sure. Uh, yeah. So I've experienced that leaving the body. 
I had a near death in 2004 at the hospital. A doctor poisoned me. Um, and it's in the book how it happened. And um, I come up, uh, I was covered up head to toe under a sheet on a stretcher. And my wife was sitting in a chair next to me crying. And I saw the myself come up and I'm at the ceiling looking down and these doctors walk in and they're like, this sure is a shame. This is 113th patient that doctors put in the hospital. Wow. Doctor over dosed and died. He was on an, uh, pills and nobody knew it. And I wow. guess there toward the end, he started just not monitoring people's blood and writing bogus prescriptions and the medicines didn't work. They crossed up with me and put me in, toxic poisoning Jesus, dude. but I came back into my body but I had vivid visions memories and I even knew the doctor's names that's what freaked everyone out my wife especially and um, so I've seen a little bit of the other side uh, from a near death experience but I still see the beings Yeah, still come and they're yeah. around me and they're prime prime thing I hear from them is they want to wake us all up. They want us to awaken uh, to a new knowledge that's about to unfold. What wow. that means, I don't know, but that's what they're saying. Overarching message. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'll just end with one last question and then I'll, you know, ask you where people can find you, podcast with you, reach out to you and stuff. But like, based on your connection with these beings, call them energy beings, the shining ones, the orbs, how much longer do you think we got to go before there's like a massive consciousness shift on this planet? You know, where I the think dark, it's, darkness ends. I think, uh, the, it's already shifting. We're yeah. in the, we're in the midst of, uh, that negative stuff where everybody's yeah. seeing it and everybody's being cautious and aware of it and are seeking. Right. It's a proverbial term, seek and you'll find. So I right. think everybody's starting to be aware, starting to seek, and it's in the process now. And based on what the phenomenon's telling me, which they told me, I, I went out, I had, I live on a pond, a little small pond, four acres. And on Easter of 2019, I walked outside, and when I did, an orb came out of the sky and hovered in front of me for a half an hour. I filmed it for 18 minutes, 25 feet away over that pond. And I went in and went to bed and I collapsed completely out of energy. I just, you thought I would have told the world, but it just, it, it sat my energy. But when I woke up the next morning, it was like, oh my God, I got to tell the world trouble's on the way. Yeah. Being said, trouble's coming. Tell everyone to lock their doors and stay inside, store up. So immediately, I hadn't talked in six or seven years. I called the first, last person that called me on a podcast. So I did 10 podcasts in 2019. And uh, I'm warning of troubles coming. Store up and lock your door. Well, I, I went to San Francisco in 2020 in February, and I'm doing a first time appearance in years and said, look, store up and lock your doors. And suddenly, uh, when I got home, COVID hit. And uh, but one of the things it told me then was we're going to help you awaken the people through witness and with uh, video and television. And so I started telling that same thing, all those podcasts. And all of a sudden in 2019, the orbs went from being one every week or two or two every week or two to uh, 39 videos last night. Wow. 2000 in the last two years so the 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 increase in activity is exponential and it's appearing around the world in huge numbers now ever since 2019 so that answers two questions basically uh the awakening is happening right now and we have to all see it for what it is and and um it's coming this new knowledge the truth that Darwin uh, basically is false. They need to move away from that. Uh, they don't fly anymore. Change the books and start let's figuring out where we came from and who created us. Didn't come from a, an amoeba or a <laughs> The big bang, bro. Come yeah, on. <laughs> yeah, it's a big lie. 
and um, it, it's just their way of explaining something they have no clue how to explain. Evolution means time. With a billion years, a, a Cadillac can make itself. <laughs> a yeah. BMW. <laughs> yeah. Or a human and animals and frogs and elephants and right. chickens, you know, all of it come from one cell. Yeah, right. You know, I'm not, I don't buy that, never have. Time to wake up and figure out the Time truth. Time to grow up. Time yeah. to wake up and grow up and take responsibility. Well, I'll just add one last thing, and then, again, I'll share. Thank you again for this amazing show. Yeah. Uh, you know, you can share how people can connect with you and do podcasts with you and stuff. But uh, as I told you, I had this profound podcast right before you with Julian Ponzin. And, and, you know, we talked about the nature of the dark side, the bad guys. And right. if you really look at them from the highest level, neutral observation, metaphysical perspective, all they do, Chris, is play the role to wake us up. Yeah. Like they really are just here laughing at us as souls saying you stupid mfers what else do we have to do to get you to wake up to realize that you have sunk again your consciousness your vibration so low that you enjoy living in fear you enjoy making poor decisions you enjoy not taking personal responsibility and accountability and i know that that's not the case for a lot of people now, but it's still the overwhelming majority of people because they avoid pain, right. right? Like they want to be comfortable. And as you and I both know, nothing is comfortable about becoming spiritually evolved. You have to make tough choices. But if we look at it from that perspective and we realize that the bad guys, call them the bad guys, the dark forces, the parasitics, the reptilians, the Anunnaki, the negatives, whatever you want to call them. There's so many different names for them. The demons, Lucifer's minions, whatever you want to call them. Like all they're doing is literally playing the role of waking your ass up. Yeah. Like turn the light switch on and they disappear or no, or don't and feed them by being in fear and thinking that you're going to go to hell and burn. And you know, the fit, what is it called? The fire, the lake of fire, the pit of eternal damnation. I mean, all these shit things that we've made up, you know, over centuries, if not even longer than that. And it's, it's crazy. But when you really look at it from that perspective, it's like, Oh, I don't have to aspire to that anymore. I don't have to live in that. I can, I can live in divinity. I can actually access and channel and bring these, uh, orb energy beings into my life and, and create a whole better reality. I mean, so when you really look at it from that perspective, and again, I know that few people are there yet consciously, everybody will get there at some point. But Chris, there isn't even bad guys when you're at that level. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt that at all. It's hard to fathom, right? It is, yeah. Uh, once you get out of the darkness, um, you know, I'm not afraid of it at all. I interact with it daily, and of course, uh, it's like it's like drugs to me. You know, some people want chemicals. Well, I want I want God. I want the exactly. I want the the presence of, you know, the angels around me because of, uh, it's just a wonderful thing. And it's really been a blessing. It was hard. It was people that made it hard. Um, it wasn't the government that made it hard. It was the, right. people, the people. In fact, the government made the most sense. That's right. Uh, yeah, they came in and helped us a lot. It's all in the book, but. You can find my book at my website or on Amazon, but on my website, ufoofgod.com. There I have social media, uh, my Instagram account. You can see videos that I've posted there. I've probably got 50 or more of orbs flying around, uh, some ground level, some in the air. And uh, you can... Um, you can read testimonies on the website from government officials to uh, PhDs and um, yeah. And Very beautiful. Yep. Yeah. So, so guys, UFO of God, you can also find this on Amazon. I just bought the book. It's uh, universally five-star rated. Like I said, it has 332 reviews. I'm going to make that 333 as long as they don't block my um, <laughs> review, which sometimes Amazon will do. But Chris, man, I so appreciate you coming on the show today. Yeah. Uh, truly amazing to talk to you and experience what you've experienced. And again, I'm so grateful. So from my heart to your heart. So to all the amazing people 
that listen to the Jay Campbell podcast and watch the Jay Campbell podcast, as always, please support the incredible people that come on, like Chris Bledsoe, go to Amazon, purchase his book, or go to his website, theufoofgod.com. And of course, remember, raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. We will see all of you guys very soon.